In this lecture, we will discuss examples of research areas using epidemiology. After you have reviewed this lecture, you should be able to complete the following learning objective. Discuss examples of epidemiology applied to different areas of public health. There are many sub-areas within epidemiology. Many epidemiologists focus on specific areas of study. In this course, we will discuss examples of epidemiology applied to different areas of public health, such as infectious diseases, chronic diseases, maternal and child health, injury, environmental health, nutrition, health policy, and health behavior. Through the beginning of the 20th century, infectious diseases were considered to be the most important global health problem. Infectious disease epidemiology is the epidemiologic study of infectious or communicable diseases. Infectious diseases are caused by an infectious agent or by the product of an infectious agent. Such an infection is due to transmission of the agent from an infected individual, animal, or reservoir to a susceptible host. Transition may be direct or indirect via a plant or animal host, vector, or an object. Over time, there has been a change in epidemiology to also focus on the study of chronic diseases. This change came about in part due to the availability of antibiotics and vaccines that have reduced the incidence of some infectious diseases, cured some cases, or even prevented some cases of infectious diseases. The change to focus on chronic diseases started in the 1940s and 1950s. Chronic disease epidemiology is the study of diseases or conditions that have a prolonged duration, such as heart disease, diabetes, epilepsy, cancer, stroke, arthritis, glaucoma, and asthma. The field of maternal and child health epidemiology focuses on improving the health and well-being of women, children, and families, and investigating risk factors for health outcomes that especially affect women and children. Injury prevention and motor vehicle safety is a very important issue in public health. However, epidemiologic and scientific methods for the study of injuries and injury control were only really developed beginning in the late 1960s. Urbanization and work in factories increased during the Industrial Revolution and led to an increase in work-related accidents and injuries. In the past, such accidents and injuries were, for a time, considered part of normal working life. However, we now know that injuries and accidents occur under certain patterns and conditions. Many injuries and accidents are predictable and are more likely to occur among certain risk groups, so we can work to reduce or prevent them. Environmental epidemiologists focus on environmental exposures or factors that affect health outcomes. Examples of environmental exposures or factors include chemical and physical agents, microbiological pathogens, social conditions that can affect environmental exposure, and climate change. Nutritional epidemiologists examine associations between nutrition and health outcomes. Research studies may focus on diet and physical activity. For example, recent research has shown that food allergies are increasing. The number of children with food allergies went up 18% from 1997 to 2007, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC. In 2007, the CDC reported that about 3 million U.S. children younger than 18 had a food or digestive allergy in the past 12 months. Knowledge gained from epidemiologic studies can be used when planning for health outcomes and disease control programs and for policies at both the population and individual levels. Public health policy decisions should be evidence-based, and epidemiologic research can provide this needed evidence. Examples of areas of health policy include medical research policy, pharmaceutical policy, vaccine policy, tobacco control policy, 
and breastfeeding promotion policy. Health behavior epidemiologists research the distribution and determinants of health behaviors and evaluate interventions and services for behaviors such as substance abuse or psychiatric disorders, and also how health behaviors and policies are associated with communicable diseases such as tuberculosis, human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections. An understanding of how behavior affects health promotion and disease prevention is important. As you can see, epidemiology is an integral part of every discipline of public health, so it truly earns its name as the basic science of public health.